with no judgment whatsoever, right? I, I, again, I'm not here to, it's not a moral thing. I'm just talking about what I do is I look at things through the lens of biology mm -hmm. and in particular through neuroscience, but some other fields as well. We have to take a step back and now knowing what we know about testosterone and dopamine and all these things and, and ask, you know, what it, what is pornography doing to the brain? Well, first of all, it's triggering the release of dopamine and in the short term testosterone by the observation of sex, not actually engaging in human contact. Think about the young brain being significantly more plastic and willing to rewire than the adult brain. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, there's no question about it. It's hyperplastic. And that person is getting dopamine and testosterone increases by observing sex and not actually by engaging in human contact. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that's concerning, right? Mm -hmm. It should come as no surprise that a lot of these people have trouble with um, romantic interactions when they do happen. Right, because they their brain isn't conditioned to respond to those. Mm -hmm. Right. Also, dopamine seeking is what triggers the increase in testosterone. But as we just talked about it, with repeated dopamine seeking or triggering of dopamine release, it starts getting diminished, diminished, diminished. So pretty soon that behavior is not causing the release of testosterone. Now people are just doing it compulsively to try and get some little droplet of dopamine out of their out of their brain. I personally think that. Porn and the availability of porn is is a real is a real detriment to the developing brain, especially to the developing brain. Yeah. Now it sounds like you rescued the behavior, um, yeah. and it takes some discipline, right? I imagine, and it it's one of those things that um, it's also anxietyless compared to dating and relationships where people are vulnerable on both sides and have to negotiate things like you know, consent and timing and, you know, and communication and all the things that are really hard to do, but are essential to do. That's, that's key. So I think, uh, pornography is a serious issue. There's also a whole aspect of pornography, which is that if people are pursuing pornography and they're not pursuing relationships, there is the potential that they reach their twenties and thirties and they are truly dysfunctional in terms of Look, every species has two major goals, protect the young, and make more of itself. And you think about what porn and masturbation, these things are, really are, I'm not calling them sinful. What I'm saying is they are potentially addictive, especially with the availability of pornography. It would be different maybe using your imagination versus uh, seeing images or like, you know, is there a difference, between, if you know any of this, is there a difference between video versus, you know, old school way of like having magazines and things like that? Well, it's... Because like, it, it, it's like more fantasy and maybe... I don't know, maybe you thinking it through about this thing is different than you just watching. Or even know, yeah. remembering past experiences. Yeah, so we can speculate there a bit. Um, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words and a movie is worth a billion pictures. I think it's fair to say that whatever problems exist in society today almost certainly existed a hundred years ago, but in a different form. Mm -hmm. Okay. We always think, oh, you know, stress was only there for the saber toothed tiger and now there are no tigers and we got this thing that's really unfortunate called stress. Look. Let's imagine this was a hundred years ago. Spouses still cheated. People still died. You had, you know, physical challenges. There was a question of, how, you know, all that stuff is, is baked into us at a deep level, right? None of those circuits have changed. It's just the circumstances that trigger them change. So I think that a hundred years ago, it wasn't cell phones. It might, but you can bet that there was, there were forms of pornography. I think that What's healthy in this domain has never really been defined. This is one of the challenges. We know what an eating disorder is, but what's eat healthy eating? <laughs> Where do you draw the line? I think given this uh, general theme that relationships are healthy, friendships are healthy, romantic relationships are healthy, and anything that inhibits the pursuit and functioning of, of healthy relationships is where you have to start saying, wait a second, I, is this behavior getting in the way? So. We just have to be careful anytime we are overwhelmed with powerful images of increasing intensity. That's where you start getting into the dopamine depletion. That's where you start getting into the hormone depletion that, that we're, that we're talking about here. So this is also true of violence. Mm. A lot of people, they're like excited about watching zombie apocalypse violence, plus all of that violent sex and everything getting poured into the same film. Well, they made horror movies, you know, 50 years ago. They were a little bit different. The question is how strong were we driving the system? And, if anyone out there is feeling underwhelmed and kind of like life is no good, et cetera, chances are your dopamine system has been pushed too hard. I'll give one quick anecdote of a friend. He's got a kid, he's 21, he graduated high school, he went to community college for a little bit, decided 
not to do that anymore. Then he stopped working. He stopped exercising. He's really fit. He's got like his genetics are like Masimas. He's kind of like he's just got this incredible physique and all. Doesn't do anything. Doesn't work. Doesn't do anything. He's a failure to launch, as we call it. And they were analyzing: Does he have ADHD? Does he this? And he heard Anna talk about dopamine depletion, and he called me and he said, and he said "I'm going to do one month, no video games, no phone, no nothing." He's 25 days in, and he's running again. He's lifting again. He's heading back to work again. And、so、awesome. this was somebody who thought he had ADHD. Now there are people with ADHD out there, but what happened was he was dopamine depleted, so he couldn't concentrate. He didn't care about anything, and so. The phone and just living in this constant stream of movies that are really stimulating on YouTube and everything else. I mean, you have to be. I mean, we're on YouTube right now, and I use YouTube for my podcast and everything. But you have to know when to shut that valve. And here's what I tell myself: shut that valve so that I can continue to enjoy it. Right? It's like gorging yourself with tomahawk steaks. They're delicious, but unless you've been fasting all day, you're not going to eat nine of them. And I think that no one told us that we needed to do that.、Mm-hmm. That's the challenge. And so, just like with training, you get out past seventy-five minutes, ninety minutes. If you're natural, you're going to start seeing a depletion in testosterone. Get out of the gym. Go eat. Go recover. Go go relax.、Yeah. You know, understand what you're doing. It's like your pre-workout. One scoop the first time, you feel like you can jump over a building. Two scoops the next time, yeah, yeah. Pretty soon, you're taking four scoops of that, four espressos, and you're kind of sitting in the parking lot texting on your phone.、Mm. Well, what's going on? Well, your dopamine depleted. So competition, effort, short intense workouts, short-ish intense workouts, sleep. You know, the the body is informing the mind whether or not there's abundance, and the brain and the body like to coordinate all the good stuff that testosterone does, like the desire to mate, the desire to work. When there's abundance, when you're depleted,、mm. it's like bank account is drained, and your body and brain are smart. It's saying you cannot go spend because you don't have any savings. 